Our next song is Cascade Rag in the key of G. We're getting out of the 12-bar blues format now and finally doing a sort of a straight rag, ragtime blues, similar to Gary Davis style songs. You know, we did Honky Tonk, but that was still really a 12-bar blues. Now we're going from the five chord to the one chord, to the five chord, to the one chord, you know. <laughs> Typical rag stuff. They're letting me do one, okay? Anyway, I want to talk to you about one thing before we get into it, and that's the use of finger picks. I've been thinking about it a little bit. And some of you use them, some of you don't, but there are some problems associated with them. And here's how I wear mine, okay? I turn my picks towards my thumb a little bit, if you notice. Okay, they're not straight. They're turned towards my thumb. And notice my thumb pick, I'm wearing very low. Okay, notice how low that is. So, the reason being is that as I come back into the guitar here, okay, most of us don't pick straight up. At least I don't. If you're a classical player, maybe you do. But if you're a funky blues guy or just loose, you kind of pick at an angle, like so. That's how I'm picking. Okay? I'm not picking straight up. So by picking at an angle, if I wore my pick straight, I'd be getting a lot of this obnoxious pick noise. And uh, the boss man, <laughs> for all these projects, hates pick noise. So I had, to, I had to really talk him into letting me use finger picks. But I play pretty clean with finger picks and it's worked out real well on the CDs and hopefully on this DVD. But I turn them, and by turning them, still by picking at an angle, my picks are actually coming up straight. So I got... Instead of... Ugly. Okay, then my thumb, by wearing it low, by wearing my thumb low, I can actually use my thumb, my thumb pick low, I can use my thumb to come underneath the, the strings and still get some bare flesh when needed. So I wear it really low, I'm just kind of using my thumb, and the fingers are turned, okay? A little finger pick action. Okay, back to the song. Ah, uh, D to G, D seventh to G, D seventh to G, run, turn around, D end, okay? So we'll play it through. So what I'm doing there is I'm just playing a D seventh chord and a G chord and just lifting my finger up on the first string just to get that opening E. But there's an extra note in there, something else I want to get in, something called filler notes. I use it in all my playing and a lot of people come up to me and say, well, you know, I, I'm playing what you're playing, but it doesn't sound quite the same. And I finally figured out I'm adding an extra note every now and then for syncopation. And the true, let's say, melody of the song would be. But I'm adding the string right above the string I'm hitting here, above it on the guitar, below it melodically, I guess. In between the bass notes, watch. A lot more funky than. Remember earlier when we were adding octaves to the boogie and we were adding slaps to the shuffle and we were adding harmonies to the slow blues? All these things help you play much better, make you sound much better, and you really can't get them from books. Because if you saw it in a book, I'm not, nothing against books, I really, I dig books, but these things really go behind the scenes. If you saw that in a book, it would go like this. But in reality, it's It's a lot closer to the note, and it's not as loud. You don't really hear it almost. So 
it's a little filler note practice. I put the string right again above the, the string I'm playing the melody on. And adding it in every now and then. Just a little trick. And something else I used there was a little roll. Kind of from my old banjo days, which I really stunk at. Yeah, well, I'm not going to make a banjo joke, so we'll leave it there. That's all I'm doing on that run there. And again, on the rolls, same as on the runs, fingers behind the thumb. Okay, so then we're going to add more D's and G's. We're improvising just like anything else. So, I'm going to come up the neck and maybe make this D7th which is an A7th, the one we've used all along. And now I'm going to make this G7th, the same D7th position we've used all along. I'm, you know, I'm just really trying to make guitar as simple as I can for you because it really, it isn't brain surgery. It isn't rocket science. Just, it's a few chords and you just use them. Then our ninth. And if those are too hard, you can substitute sevenths. C, G. And then I go into a thumb roll, okay? Just a roll of the right hand. And you can miss like that. <laughs> it's totally cool. This song is if you're doing it on your own or you're trying to improvise, again, you just have to find the two chords, a D7 somewhere and a G or G7 somewhere on the neck. So we've seen it here and here, basic Travis pick. Then we've seen it, we could do it here, G to D. We could do it here, excuse me, D to G. We could do it here, D to G. You want to get crazy, you could go D, G, or absolutely nuts, D, or seventh, G. So again, a little bit out of the 12 bar form, but still basically sticking to a form, five, one, five, one, five, one, and a turnaround, leaving you a lot of room to improvise. Uh, left hand chords, right hand rolls, okay? The cascade rag. Good luck, have fun, play fast. <laughs>